Good morning, my dear student. Uh, my dear student today, uh, and welcome to the uh, continuity of my lecture series uh, of the uh, pathogenesis of periodontal disease. Uh, after we finish the, uh, the dental plaque uh, lectures and all of the concentrations of that dental plaque and then the uh, dental plaque hypothesis and the, uh, the level of the mechanistics and the understanding of this hypothesis give you an idea uh, about the uh, how the disease uh, firstly uh, formulating and has an effect on the host and the uh, inflammations might uh, exist after that. But today, uh, uh, according to these uh, dental plaque and hypothesis, I just try to uh, also explain some of the uh, main principles of the pathogenistic interactions that happens within the periodontal disease according to the accumulation of dental plaque uh, on the uh, tooth surfaces and all related tooth surfaces. Uh, the, according to the accumulation of that dental plaque and all of the inflammatory uh, changes uh, that might happen to the uh, uh, parallel to the thickness and the accumulation of dental plaque to the two surfaces and all of the related soft tissues. Uh, the goal of the all inflammatory are the immune reactions uh, just to protect the host uh, against this local microbial attack and just keeping and maintain it uh, locally at the uh, most superficial epithelial as much as uh, they can, uh, they could do that. Uh, not uh, not the, not to do uh, to go downward and to uh, to do uh, the invas uh, to the deepest layer. I mean beyond symmetry and junctions. So the dental plaque and the primary contents of the periodontal pathogen within uh, uh, try try to uh, trigger this inflammatory changes and just keep the host to continually releasing those of the inflammatory mediators. Uh, in order to, uh, to favor to the bacterial pathogen survival at the suspected site. So inflammatory, but the, uh, the, the good news is just that this inflammatory and immune reactions at the same time, uh, although it, uh, it leads to the uh, devastating and harmful effect to the host itself, but it could uh, confine and limit the uh, growth and uh, destroy all of the invading microorganisms at the epithelial and even on the subepithelial connective tissue uh, parts. But in general, the microorganisms, I mean, uh, uh, try to do that effect either directly to the host causing that tissue. And uh, I think the last theories, uh, last week we talk, when we talked about the keystone pathogen hypothesis, either doing the direct shifting to the microbial pathogen and causing dysbiosis and all of the harmful effect or indirectly shifting uh, the host to do uh, the uh, uh, the destruction by itself. And the latest way is the most favorable way of the bacterial pathogen to do that. Uh, uh, this inflammatory and immune reactions, uh, uh, honestly, just uh, could be visible both clinically uh, within a few days and microscopically uh, before that, uh, within a few hours in the affected predations. Uh, and as I said, that uh, this uh, inflammatory changes in general, keeping just potentially the bacteria try to be potentially harmful to the cell to the host uh, when uh, when exist uh, in the suspected area. I mean, in the connective, especially in the connective tissue side beyond, beyond the symmetry of junction. Uh, to initiate the periodontal disease, uh, uh, microorganisms uh, within a few days after quitting the, all the uh, practicing oral hygiene measures, I mean the mechanical tooth brush, imagine yourself when you quit that brush within a few uh, hours, all of the inflammatory changes try to uh, initiate according to that dental plaque. Uh, and as I said, the microscopical features that I will come in a minute uh, just preceding or just happened before the clinical uh, science of that inflammation. But till now, all of these uh, interactions and alteration considered reversible. So the reversible means that when we quit, uh, when you uh, resume or just uh, get back to your uh, dental uh, practices, uh, hygiene practice, 
all of this gingival uh, gingivitis uh, sinus symptoms uh, disappear on the return to the physiological states. So the defense mechanisms, as I said, that the, all of the defense mechanisms uh, appear, appear initially uh, just try to uh, to resolve or to reverse the pathological conditions from the disease state to the uh, healthy physiological states. So of course, at the first steps, all of these interactions considered reversible. Uh, and some of the susceptible area, this gingival conditions uh, may quit completely on central of the gingival, gingival uh, uh, inflammatory changes might uh, exist as long as the uh, bacterial pathogen need to do that, I, as I said. But some of them, uh, unfortunately, might shift into what is the periodontitis. And uh, this uh, 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 alterations in the transitions or the stability uh, depends on different, different several factors. Uh, may might relate into the host itself, to the host susceptibility to the periodontitis or not might relate it to the quantity or the quality of the dental plaque, as we said. Uh, might uh, relate to all of the local retentive plaque factors that happens uh, to the genetic background. Uh, so uh, to the quality of the plaque, uh, to the microbial pathogens, all of these uh, changes, or all of these factors, uh, if you combine one or two more factors, uh, lead to the uh, increasing susceptibility of those uh, periodontitis patients. So entirely the whole condition of some some guys might uh, uh, return to the gingivitis state and even within the same individuals, some sites uh, uh, in the same mouth, I mean, uh, some sites uh, might uh, keep into the gingivitis for a long time and might uh, other sites might develop to the periodontitis. But in general, the imbalance of the host and microbial interactions that happens in the uh, affected sites uh, and all of the effects that affect the microbial dysbiosis, as I explained that in the last lectures, uh, this is represent the key uh, principles to initiate the transform from the gingivitis to the uh, advanced lesions in the periodontitis state. Uh, to understand how the pathogenicity uh, exists, and when I say the pathogenicity, it, remain, it means all the biological and histological events that occur, occur in the affected sites and transferred from the healthy state to the uh, disease inflammatory state. Uh, and, as was, and, and, and as we said, the main etiological factors presented in the plaque are the principal part of it, in addition to the diet and the uh, influence of saliva, the principal part of it belong to the bacteria. So the bacteria, uh, in order to not present the pathogen to cause a disease, uh, it might, first of, uh, first of all, it might need to accomplish the colonization state as the successful rate, especially in the subgingival area because of the problem we have in the subgingival area and, uh, from, all con from all points of view. Uh, in addition to the production of certain factors that either directly affecting or damaging to the host, uh, which could do that, but the most favorable way is by immune modulations and doing all of the uh, necessary uh, changes that happens within the host in order to destruct itself. So according to the number one colonization of the subgingival area, in order to do that, the subgingival size, the presental pathogen uh, need to attach or to adhere to one or more of the available surface, and then multiply to and compete successfully against other species. And this competition is very, very important in order to prove who's the strongest one that found the subgingival area, and then defend itself from the host defense mechanisms, uh, from other bacteria, from the uh, even the antimicrobial agents. Uh, if we uh, uh, talk about the uh, adhesive uh, uh, abil uh, ability of certain bacteria and the adhesion process in general, uh, in general, the bacteria need to do uh, adhere or to attach uh, to one of the available surfaces. Under number one, of course, we have the tooth and the root surfaces whether uh, at the level of the uh, supragingival margin, which is just above the semitonal junction, 
and this is belong to the animal surface or just at the level of the cement animal junction, which is represent the critical zone, or going to the subgingival area, which is the most susceptible zone that leading to the advanced uh, uh, connective tissue loss of attachment. Uh, and when they do that, when they do that, uh, this represents a very, a very interesting point to the bacteria because uh, as they, uh, the point below the symptom junction represents the, the point of entry to that uh, semigingival environment and deepening of the gingival sulcus towards uh, uh, shifting to the apical uh, pocket and uh, epical migration of junctional epithelium, this, this represents a very important lush and rich environment, anaerobic environments to the uh, continuity of survival and colonization of other uh, dangerous uh, microorganisms, especially red complex one. By Cyprinus skip classification representing uh, the predominantly inhabited by Perfumonus gingivalis, or might adhere to the sulcular or pocket epithelium. As I said, uh, this is represent the hard tissue size, and this is the soft tissue size. From the other side, uh, representing the sulcular epithelium and the more susceptible one, susceptible one. As I said, the junctional epithelium, or might adhere to the other bacterial species that attach to these surfaces. Especially this, uh, 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 this is, uh, represent the criteria of the uh, weak invader or the weak adherent bacteria that has not the ability to adhere and invade the deepest layer of tissues. So it's need to do attachment to the uh, certain bacterial species to attach that is already found attached to the surface. Example of this uh, is uh, this picture of the electron microscope represent the, uh, uh, this white uh, uh, colonies of the, uh, this round white colonies of the Streptococcus cristatus that is non-motile and cannot invade the epithelial cells without the help and the assistance of the long road of uh, Fusobacterium neopleatum. So the cristate is found to attach to the shift, to the shaft of the Fusobacterium neopleatum and the Fusobacterium neopleatum is highly motile and can invader can go to the deeper to the invader uh, to invade uh, the host uh, periodontal tissue. This represents the bridge microorganisms that sounds the uh, find it very highly effective in the connectivity between the primary and secondary colonizers. Uh, certain examples of the this uh, adhesins on the uh, adhesin lige ligand uh, represent by the fine barrier uh, adhesin uh, of certain gyro microorganisms like for uh, Tenella for CFE or just Perfumonis gingivalis. Um, and cell associated proteins uh, representing plexacy and proteinases and other uh, outer membrane vesicles uh, consider really powerful adhesins to uh, use to attach uh, attachment of variant parent pathogens such as epidermis and gingivalis. Other uh, uh, phenomena, uh, characteristic features are of this um, uh, not involved in the pathogenesis uh, and related to the periodontal pathogen characteristic is the co-aggregation of the bacteria. The co-aggregation of the bacteria is one of the um, uh, characteristic features of the advanced complex microbial uh, uh, communications and interrelation between each other. Uh, especially this co-aggregation is the bacteria that need to co-aggregate uh, uh, represent the you normal know, bacteria. Uh, such as the, for example, the binding of the lacno and aerobiculum siberium uh, to uh, treponema and ticola, actually, in the presence of PG gingivalis outer membrane vesicles. So the vesicles of PG uh, try to facilitate us in the media of the attachment of uh, Siberium, uh, L Siberium to the T and ticola. Uh, but the most interesting point on the things that uh, this carrying on the co-aggregations found in the uh, artistic uh, manners uh, such as find by the electron microscope that the T identical and find to carry the Siberium in the way of a picky bag appearance. Uh, uh, like these pictures. So uh, the co-aggregation co -aggregation is needing, uh, sometimes is very important and needed to between certain microbial species in order to achieve uh, the colonization as stable uh, uh, colonization states of those bacteria. The next one uh, represents the multiplications after the adherence and co-aggregate the bacteria need to uh, multiplicate in the subgingival area. And the subgingival area uh, 
represents uh, one of the most important uh, rich and lush environment for the, the some uh, to a lot of bacteria but at the same time uh, represent uh, really challenging uh, to survive and grow at that period uh, in that area one of the challenging environmental uh, points uh, represent the temperatures uh, so without the uh, uh, a convenient and the adaptable uh, temperature to each of these microbial pathogens that cannot grow and survive. Uh, uh, the average is found in subgingival areas about 35 centigrade in general in the subgingival uh, tissues and the pH uh, from 7 to 8.5. And the interesting point uh, in the 7 to 8.5 represent uh, a very ideal uh, pH to a lot of the virulent and aerobic uh, bacterial pathogens such as P. gingivalis that like to grow in the alkaline environment. Uh, if you can imagine at the first steps of the gingival inflammation and the gingivitis, uh, all the, uh, the whole uh, situations it, uh, tend to be acidic. Uh, this favors the uh, colonization of uh, certain bacterial species, especially the primary colonizers, certain kind of uh, Citrypt and lactobacillus lice try to survive in the um, in the low pH environment, in the acidic one. And once the those bacteria using the acidic environments and uh, they try to use the low pH environments, the whole uh, acidity it tried to, uh, to, to shift it uh, toward to be a neutral at first at around seven, and then to alkaline one, and the alkaline really encourage the uh, survival of the secondary most dangerous variant periodontal pathogens and this shifting in the ecological stress i think i just uh, explained that uh, to you last lectures in the ecological plaque hypothesis and how the uh, interbacterial relationships try to cooperate between each other in terms of uh, uh, encouraging survival uh, the growth uh, uh, the oxygen levels, the nutrient, the pH, the temperatures, etc. And also we have the nutrient source. Uh, the nutrient source, uh, three main uh, uh, dominant parts of, uh, of uh, nutrient sources are found uh, either from the diet subgingivally found, the remnant of diet, or from the host. And the host, the most important challenges uh, to those subgingival area in order to multiply is the presence of human uh, represent one of the main skeleton part uh, to the survival or might uh, this nutrient might available from other subgingival species also uh, all, of, all of these uh, represent the challenging factors really that the bacteria need to uh, need to ensure that all of these uh, are available in order to continue to the multiply multiplications and also one of the challenges that the nutrients might deliver uh, in certain abundance uh, level to the outer layer of the plaque and may need uh, may not reach the deepest layer. So the physical barrier of the plaque itself might have a role in uh, uh, the the transmissions of the nutrients between different layers of the plaque. Uh, not the superficial one is not exactly the same or the deepest one. Then the interbacterial relationships, the, there's uh, other issues about these relationships, some of them uh, really uh, beneficial or encouraging to survive a uh, certain kind of species. Uh, one species might provide the growth factors of the facility of the attachment of the another, or might have an antagonistic effect due to the competitions of the nutrient or the binding sites. Uh, or might have the production of certain substances that limits or prevent the growth of a second species. As uh, for this example, that uh, for example, the production of hydrogen peroxide by stripped sanguis might suppress the growth of the uh, aggregate vector actinomycidin comitins. And the actinomycidin comitins found to inhibit the growth of the stripped sanguis uh, through the production of bacteria seen. So these two examples represent uh, the uh, antagonistic relationship between those bacteria. While a certain, uh, uh, certain uh, certain bacterials, uh, bacterial relationships might have the uh, uh, synergistic interactions like the outer membrane physical or pigeon device might facilitate really the growth on the binding of, as I said in the last slide, uh, on the last slide, 
uh, the interconjugation of the uh, El Siberian with the Tid and Ticola. Uh, once the uh, bacterial attached to the subprogenjival and then to the zone and going to the subgenjival area, uh, there are too many uh, host related obstacles uh, in the subprogenjival is different from the subgenjival, of course. Uh, but the when the bacterial when the child bacterial challenges on colonizing the subgenjival side, there's a certain that, for example, the flow of saliva and the GCF fluid the flow. Uh, the mechanical displacement also by chewing and speaking, saliva and gingival crevice fluid components of the blocked binding of bacterial cells to the mammalian surface, uh, such as certain uh, glycoprotein, saliva glycoprotein, mucine, that might act in non-specific blocking agents. So the bacteria need to uh, engineer some of the uh, possible mortalities uh, involved how to evade those uh, obstacles in order to continue their multiplications, attachment and congregation multiplications toward uh, complete successful colonization. And also when the bacterial uh, attached to the uh, subgenual area, also there are certain host mechanisms that might come into the play like the sequimation of the FTL cells. Uh, this is sequimation evaded by the binding to the underlying FTL cells. So if the uh, bacteria in, uh, can uh, bind or just invade to the sub epithelial layer, adjacent to the retipix area and the connective tissue, the desequimation and the superficial layer of the superficial layer of the epithelial uh, layers, uh, desequimations might not have an influence of uh, uh, flushing the bacteria out. Uh, also, the specific antibody could uh, act uh, by preventing the bacterial attachment or making the bacteria more susceptible to the phagocytic uh, uh, or killing mechanisms. In order to evade this specific antibody effect, the bacteria needed to uh, also to develop certain modalities uh, in order to uh, overcome this uh, property, such as, for example, the uh, pg gingivalis and P-intermediate, carbonocytophagia, can destroy those antibody, uh, antibodies by productions of the, for example, immunoglobulin G and A proteases. Uh, or can uh, the certain bacterial antigen can shifting or just changing the uh, outer uh, biological uh, 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 residues like the collector C residues, uh, for example, just to make the host antigen species in order that the host uh, uh, immune cells not recognize the bacterial ligands because they just shifting the outer configuration of those virulence factors. So when the bacteria shift that virulence factors, it gives the impression to the host that this uh, uh, invading uh, particles is maybe part of the normal host uh, microstructure. Also, we have the production of certain leukotox leukotoxin by uh, aggregated bacterial actinomycin concomitants on, for example, the capsule of, of uh, P. gingivalis might inhibit the phagocytosis itself. So all of these uh, modalities that the bacteria can do just to ensure that uh, uh, it invades certain host-related defense mechanisms, such as the specific antibody production, uh, the role of those antibody to destroy the uh, bacterial pathogen. Uh, regarding the various factors, uh, uh, we have uh, the propositions of uh, two main mechanisms of this pathogenicity. So the pathogenicity uh, might involve, uh, first of all, the host invasion by subgenzival species. When the bacteria has the ability to invade the deepest layer, is definitely involved in the pathogenic interaction. And the long range effect of subgenzival virulence factors uh, that either directly which is uh, the bacteria like to do, but the most one that the bacteria favorable and really like to do is the uh, causing the immune itself uh, on the tissue itself uh, uh, damage the whole uh, uh, part of the uh, affected site. This is called the indirect effect. Various factors can be divided into three, three categories, either substances which is directly affecting the tissue cells like H2S or substances causing cell to release biological active substances like certain inflammatory mediators like cytokines. Uh, this is my might affecting uh, due to the influence of the uh, bacterial lipopolysaccharide 
or maybe substances that affect the intercellular matrix, neither to the tissue or nor the uh, causing cells releasing these substances, but just affecting the intercellular matrix, for example, such as the collagenases. And by the way, these substances might relate to the collagenases, might relate to the bacteria or to the host itself, which is has dual action. Uh, here we have some examples of the various factors of, for example, aggregate bacteria actinomycin comitins, like leukotoxin, cytotoxin, distending toxin, life polysaccharide, heat shock protein, surface antigen, and antimicrobial resistance. And also we have the p-gingivalis, ginger pain, capsular polysaccharide, fine barrier, uh, proteinase, hemolysin, collagenase, trypsin-like activity, and other hydrolytic activities. Here we need to describe uh, what we call uh, normal gingiva, or between two uh, comments like clinically healthy gingiva. What's the meaning of the normal gingiva? And uh, the normal gingiva and uh, different uh, steps or different level of transition of that normal gingiva to the advanced, advanced uh, uh, inflammatory uh, state. How is the microscopical and the clinical uh, characteristic feature will shift from that state to that state? And general normal gingiva has two types, like super healthy. Uh, we have super healthy, which we call pristine, which uh, histologically has little or no inflammatory infiltrates. So uh, uh, you can see all of my uh, next slides are uh, mainly uh, focus on the histological uh, uh, description rather than clinical, unless I specify this uh, in certain slides. So the super healthy pristine uh, uh, means no health, uh, no inflammatory, uh, inflammatory infiltrates, by the clinically healthy, although it's a clinically healthy, and as a very clear, it says a clinically healthy, just a clinical, but the histological, not like this, uh, looks similar, but clinically, but histologically features have a few inflammatory infiltrates. So the clinical health of gingiva, if we can uh, uh, have a list on the certain clinical features like pink color and pink consistency, the gingival margin exhibit a sculpt outline, the interdental papillae are firm, and there's no bleeding or probing, uh, and uh, just fill the space below the contact area. The gingiva uh, exhibit a stippling appearance, stippling appearance like the orange uh, peel in appearance, uh, and there's a, a knife edge margin between two tooth and soft tissue. The microscopical features of this clinically uh, healthy gingiva the neutral infiltrate the junction epithelium on the infocyte, the subgingival connective tissue. The GCF uh, was found normally uh, secreted. And by the way, the GCF, even in the healthy uh, physiological states, there's a certain level of secretion, but uh, the secretion uh, going to be increased proportional to the severity of gingival inflammation. Uh, the infiltrate at this stage might occupy about 5%, which is quite low. Uh, of the connective tissue volume, uh, mainly composed of the monocyte, macrophages, lymphocyte, and a neutrophil. Okay. Uh, clinical health of gingiva appears as stable without progression to the disease uh, because of uh, the certain uh, controller that falls within the normal healthy physiological state. Uh, number one, like we get regular shedding of the epithelial cells into the oral cavity. We have an intact epithelial barrier, and this uh, this point is, is very very important. And even the periodontal pathogen can do a lot, depends on this point. So when uh, manipulating or playing with the epithelial barrier and uh, causing this in, this uh, uh, disintegration of the epithelial barrier on all of the epithelial to epithelial junction uh, destruction. Uh, leading to generating gaps between the uh, epithelial layer of cells and between the epithelial to the connective tissue. And this represents one of the pathways that the microorganism is going inside. Also, we have the positive fluid flow of the gingival crevice, uh, which may remove the non-attached uh, microorganisms or noxious products. But this depends, again, on the, uh, on the equilibrium that's found. If the noxious products and the quantity of the uh, dental plaque and those microorganisms exceeding the ability of this fluid flow to wash the bacteria out, 
the flu the flu can do nothing actually uh, regarding this matter on the uh, uh, continuous invasive uh, properties of the pathogen on this noxious products coming from the epithelial to the connective tissue. Also, we have the antimicrobial effect of the antibodies. Uh, on uh, the antibody can do different different parts uh, regarding uh, uh, just to inhibit the uh, the growth and uh, development of the disease state. Uh, uh, the phagocytic function of the neutrophil and macrophages and detrimental effect of the complements also on the microbiota. Uh, Page and Schroeder uh, just came to have an, a very certain experimental study within 28 days of a blood development on the Beagle's dog. Okay, uh, they found uh, at the time of uh, quitting the uh, mechanical tooth brushing of the teeth on the, dental, uh, on the Beagle dog, uh, and just uh, they generate what we call the model of experimental gingivitis. So they try to uh, find exactly on the microscopic level how this uh, situation uh, was shifted from the healthy to the most advanced uh, gingival inflammatory states. So at the period of the 28 days, uh, Page and Schroeder uh, uh, goes in details to describe uh, in every, every steps in details. So they found at day zero, the normal gingiva is compromised about 40 to 45 uh, in epitheliums compared to 55 to 60 in the connective tissue, which is quite similar, it's about 50-50. And the, that connective tissue mainly composed of the uh, collagen and the intercellular matrix followed by fibroblast and uh, certain vessels of other tissue constituents. But uh, following a plaque combination day after day, the neutrophil and monial uh, nuclear leukocyte migration increases while lymphocyte plasma cell macrophage adhere to the collagen matrix. The uh, connective tissue over that period of 28 days it tried to increase in volume, increase in volume over the, that period. Uh, and the volume of residual tissues, including intercellular matrix and collagen, degraded collagen, exudate, degenerated or dead cells and small blood vessels and increases. So the patient showed her, according to that uh, journey, uh, trying to uh, uh, classify the progression of this uh, gingival inflammation on the basis of the clinical and histopathological evidence into four phases. So we have an initial phase, and then the early phase, early lesion, sorry, and the established lesion, and going to the advanced lesion, uh, which is characterized by the presence of bone loss. The initial lesion, uh, uh, a clinically healthy gingiva, between two brackets, the meaning, uh, uh, typically uh, exists within the first 24 hours. More changes are evident in the microvascular. So the microvascular adjacent to the uh, epithelial layer uh, beneath, sorry, the junction of epithelium, is trying to uh, exchange, uh, increase in number and try to uh, vasodilate in order to prepare the inflammatory uh, changes uh, migrate of the inflammatory uh, uh, neutrophil, inflammatory neutrophil cells. So the increased capillary dilation on the intercapillary gaps uh, in order to facilitate the migration of those uh, neutrophil to the subgingival area, uh, to the conjunction epithelial layer. Of the lesion enlarged on the gingival, uh, the, uh, the gingival also clavicular flow with the flow and increases the founds of the bacteria and their noxious products are diluted both in the tissue and the crevice. Within uh, two to four days of like buildup, the acidic responses uh, is well established. But all of these points were just still in the, at the level of the initial state of the gingival inflammation. Okay, uh, then the early one, we call the early gingivitis, it exactly typically happened within one week of the plaque accumulation without uh, tooth cleaning. And uh, it depends on the uh, several factors on the plaque accumulation quantity, the hormonal levels, and the host responses. So all of these changes might change between individuals and, uh, to another, depending on these three uh, current points. But in general, there's uh, the vasodilation is very uh, so apparent, 
on the capillary dilation, which leading to an increase in the gingival capillary fluid flow. Uh, the predominant infiltrate at this level of the gingival inflammation found to be neutrophil and lymphocyte, uh, the T cells one, this beginning of the cellular one. The basal epithelial layer uh, starts to proliferate, what we call the retibics uh, between the epithelium and connective tissue. Okay, and uh, an increase in the fibroblast degeneration and collagen destruction, which uh, which was found parallel to the increase in the volume of the connective tissue in general. The gingiva appears more uh, of the matters clinically swallowed and more tendency toward deeper gingival sulcus. Then the established lesion, we call the established gingivitis, and again the progression to the periodontitis, or uh, sorry, the progression towards this lesion depends on the bacterial ch blood challenge, or host susceptibility, and local systemic risk factor. Clinically, the early gingivitis here uh, appears has more edematous and swelling than the early one. So the established more, uh, uh, definitely has clinically more edematous and swelling than early one. The increase in the leukocyte migration uh, in the gingival cell cause plasma cells found to be the predominant one in the coronal connective tissue part. The retibics extend deeper into the connective tissue to maintain the epithelial integrity against microbial entry. Okay, uh, the pocket epithelium is formed at this level. Uh, short permeability to underlying connective tissue and less resistant to the passage of uh, periodontal uh, probe. Bleeding is a common feature of the established lesion. Uh, so at, at this level, you can see it clinically, there's, there's an increase in the erythematous state and uh, color shifting from pinkish to, uh, to more uh, deepest red in color and the demotis state and the swallowing state, but uh, there's no bleeding until the established gingivitis is coming. And uh, as a parallel to the uh, found in microscopically that the plasma cells uh, seen primarily in the connect coronal connective tissue, as I said. If this lesion continue without interruption, interruption, I mean the retaining of the uh, mechanical plaque control, the advanced lesion, which is represent the last lesion coming in contact, uh, sorry, come in action. Uh, this represents the starting and the beginning of periodontitis onset. The advanced lesion is characterized by transition from gingivitis to periodontitis. Uh, when I said periodontitis, I mean one of the uh, uh, characteristic features of the periodontal uh, attachment. Uh, 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 periodontitis uh, signs of periodontitis come in, in contact in, in action, like uh, the loss of the connective tissue attachment or deepening in the periodontal pocket depth. Okay, uh, so this depends again on the bacterial challenge, the composition quantity. Uh, just rem uh, remember the uh, previous uh, plug hypothesis about the specific and non specific one. The host inflammatory response on the susceptibility factors, environmental, and risk factors. The pocket also increases in deepening and enriched with an anaerobic night, which is the standard goal of the anaerobic periodontal pathogen to reach at this level to the deepest layer of the uh, beyond the junction of epithelium along parallel to the root surface. The cells infiltrate extend laterally and extend out to the going to apically is going laterally and from all directions uh, around the root uh, and uh, connective tissue. Uh, and the alveolar bone loss represents one of the very important characteristic feature of this lesion occurs and the plasma cells uh, remaining the dominant cell types in the advanced lesion. So this lesion, if you can imagine it, uh, if it is happened, represent one of the most uh, um, uh, critical actually uh, state on the zone that protecting the whole periodontium apparatus from being more uh, advanced uh, and destructive, which represents beyond the cemental animal junction. If this zone was destroyed by those uh, periodontal pathogens, either directly or indirectly by the host itself, this uh, uh, represents this, the beginning of uh, uh, the periodontium fall down, actually and the whole destructive process will become more severe and more severe within time uh, if uh, no uh, correct um, preventive measures uh, will start uh, at that level. 
So um, the clinicians need to uh, diagnose this uh, lesion perfectly and correctly according to the updated uh, classification system. How can we uh, diagnose this advanced lesion from the previous established lesion based on, based on the clinical and radiographical and sometimes maybe a microscopical uh, analysis? Okay, so in order to have uh, a very good well-structured uh, diagnostic uh, depend, uh, the diagnosis that leading to the uh, more successful treatment plan in the future. So at this level, I will just stop now uh, as I uh, finish the certain uh, uh, different uh, characteristic feature of the gingival inflammation microscopically and certain uh, most important uh, definitions involved in the pathogenesis of the uh, periodontal disease. Uh, and again, I'll just try to uh, explain uh, my dear students that all of this information, it just, uh, I found it suitable and accommodating your educational level. But in fact, there's a lot of the advanced uh, molecular changes that have happened within the pathogenesis of periodontal disease. Uh, this might not be appropriate for you, might maybe for the postgraduate, uh, level. So this uh, uh, today I, uh, I I finished this my part uh, about the pathogenesis and hopefully uh, we'll meet you in the next week uh, with my last lectures about the host parasite interactions on the very interesting and important certain views I will uh, try to uh, highlight it and spot it uh, try to explain uh, what's the meaning of this interaction in in turn of uh, periodontal diseases. So thank you for your listening and kind attention. And um, I will happy to answer any kind of questions if you have either by your page in the classroom or when you attend personally in, the, in our department. Thank you so much and goodbye.